What's up dudes and dudettes? This is a uh, house arrest pro here with another quick Resident Evil 3 video. Now in this video, okay, I've seen a lot of people ask me personally and I've seen it in several uh, Resident Evil Facebook groups that I'm a part of and on YouTube. Which weapons should they spend their points on and unlock? You know, as far as like which ones are worth it, which ones are not. Uh, so today that's what we're going to take a look at. Now I've already showed you guys, if you've watched my other video, uh, a little bit about some of these, like two or three of these. Today we're going to be demonstrating all of them. Not just the weapons, but the items as well. Uh, as you can see, I've been through this game so many times at this point, I still have to post my complete playthroughs on here. Uh, again, I've got them saved on my PlayStation in hour-long episodes, and I will be posting them. Uh, but I'm having difficulty uh, uploading them directly from my PlayStation. So I'm waiting until I get a little USB storage drive so I can uh, transfer them onto there and then upload them from my PC. So, today... Uh, as you can see, I've completed all challenges, and I literally have everything unlocked that you can possibly get unlocked uh, once you complete all the challenges it literally gives you enough points to unlock every single item every single weapon from the shop so today we're going to be demoing a couple of those weapons i'm going to be telling you a little bit more about what they do uh, the way that i went in progressing what i unlocked uh, and whether or not i think you know that item or that weapon was worth the amount of points that I spent on it so first things first what we have here in our inventory is all weapons I don't have the coins on here yet because I want to show you what I'm gonna do is give you a little demo of how many hits it takes to down enemies without the coins from each weapon and then show you what a big difference having the assault coin makes as far as the amount of damage that you deal out with these weapons uh the recovery coins how great and wonderful they are and the defense coins now i do have this book so these i'll start with this and this because these are both things that i can't really show you what they do but i can tell you as far as this uh, field combat manual here, it says it, it makes it easier to uh, perform such physical treats as the perfect dodge. And that is true. I am not very good at dodging. Typically, uh, I don't do a lot of dodging. You know, I, I like to down enemies, uh, make sure they don't come back unless I'm doing some sort of speed run or something like that. So this, to me, uh, was definitely well worth the price of admission. It does make it so much easier to dodge. Okay, the second item that we have here is this crafting companion. And it says that while held, increase it increases the amount of ammo gain when crafting. Okay, so back to this real quick. Again, all of these items have to be in your inventory, in your carry around with you inventory not in your storage box in order to do anything so this book as long as you have it in your inventory will help you you know with the perfect dodge if it's in your storage box it's not going to do a hill of beans all right so it has to be on you same thing with this crafting companion now if you have something like one of these uh infinite ammo weapons that you unlock obviously this crafting companion doesn't do a whole lot because uh, it doesn't make a difference when crafting herbs or anything like that strictly ammo so if, for me it was one of the first things that I unlocked because I didn't have quite enough points yet to unlock the weapons so I unlocked this first uh, to basically it, it doubles the amount of ammunition that you make so let's say you craft an explosive A and an explosive A for uh, some grenade launcher rounds generally it would make three to whereas if you have this crafting companion on you you now make six uh, same thing with handgun bullets I believe when you craft gunpowder and gunpowder it makes 15 if I'm not mistaken handgun bullets by having this on you 
it crafts double that amount. So 30 handgun bullets at one time, the same with shotgun shells. So it's, it's definitely a great item to have early, early on. Now, if you've unlocked, you know, the infinite ammo uh, on some of these other weapons, then obviously this is, this is pretty much obsolete. It's not gonna do you a whole lot of good. But if you haven't and you're, you know, needing ammunition, this makes it to where you can be extremely liberal with that ammunition. Okay, next we have this, the hot dogger. Okay, so I bought this pretty early on because I thought, man, that just sounds amazing, it sounds awesome. Uh, as its name implies, this umbrella developed anti-bioweapon knife is used by those who like to show off. The blade can be superheated, causing the target to burst into flames. Now, I generally don't do a whole lot of knifing on this game either. Uh, I don't do a whole lot of knife-only runs or, you know, uh, about the only thing I'll use a knife for uh, when, when, you know, I'm lower on ammo is I might drop a zombie to the ground and then while he's on the ground, run up and, and see if I can get a few hits in with a knife. I thought when I purchased this thing that it would be at least like a one to two hit kill for something like a zombie, let's say. Uh, honestly, I could not tell that big of a difference between this knife and a combat knife. Personally, I am not a fan, and for the amount of points I spent to unlock this thing, it just, it really kind of let me down. I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. But I was expecting, oh man, I'm gonna slash him with this and then set him on fire. And that's just not, not what happened here. Sorry, I was trying to dodge and hit the wrong button. But as you can see, it does set them on fire. It just, uh, it definitely takes several hits. Hell, I'm about to die right here. But I am just not a fan of this thing. I think it's overpriced for what it is. Uh, I'm not sure, to be quite honest with you, that it does a whole lot more damage, if any, than just your regular, uh, you know, your regular knife that you, that you start out with. So, not a fan of that at all, at all. Now, if you were attempting to do a knife only run playthrough, then maybe, you know, uh, maybe with that and the assault coins uh, that you can unlock, maybe, you know, I, I haven't tested that yet. Maybe we'll test that here in a minute to see if I have those assault coins on me, if this may be a one hit or, you know, at least a two hit shot kill to zombies. But as far as without those coins, it definitely doesn't, doesn't live up to expectations. Okay, so we move on. Now we have these two. These are the handguns that you can unlock. One is the Samurai Edge. It's a 15 shot capacity, nine millimeter handgun. It's been customized according to Jill's personal specifications. Excellent across the board with exceptional accuracy and firepower. <sighs> this is basically a handgun, guys. Uh, it uses the same nine millimeter rounds as the, the other handguns that you have here in the game. It's definitely not unlimited infinite ammo. Uh, so again, you know, and for the amount that it, it costs to unlock it, just not worth it to me. Uh, I mean, if you're gonna save up for a weapon and you're looking for something that is gonna help you complete the game quicker or easier, uh, you know, if you're trying to get that S ranking or something like that, this is not going to do it. I mean, it still takes five, six shots to put down a zombie just like your regular handgun. But as a matter of fact, we'll go around this corner here and let's show you a little bit of what it does. Let's see if I can lure this guy just around the corner. Come on. And again, we're in standard mode here. We're not in hardcore or anything like that. I wanted to show you guys you know on a standard so we got one two to drop him now the one thing i will say is ooh, we did well there are two things that i will say first of all it does score critical hits 
a little bit better than your standard handgun. Uh, and the crosshairs zoom in quicker. Like I was telling somebody earlier, okay, when your crosshairs are spread apart like this, you don't do as much damage as if you wait till they zero in like that and get real tight, okay? With this, it they do zoom in a lot quicker. So you can score those hits a little better and a little faster. However, again, this is what, four shots now on the zombie and I still don't think he's completely dead. He may be at this point now. But, you know, it probably would have taken me four, maybe five shots with a standard handgun. So, you know, you're not getting infinite ammo. Uh, you're getting a little bit more damage maybe. Uh, but you you're getting the ability to zoom to do more damage quicker with those crosshairs zoomed in and you're also getting an, an occasional uh, Critical hit or two more so those are the pros and cons Still if I was looking for something to help me complete the game faster or easier and I had enough points to unlock this because I do think it's quite a bit I can't remember exactly what I spent on it, but if, if I'm looking at it like that, I'm just going to save up to get something like mm, this. And this is what, actually, i tell you what, we'll go to this thing first, next. Because I really love this gun. This was the first weapon that I personally unlocked. And I really did not know what to expect. This is the Raiden. This is the little uh, 15, well, uh, hold on. An emergency weapon developed by Umbrella, or an energy weapon, excuse me, developed by Umbrella based on airborne electrical phenomenon. It possesses great stopping power, but only when targeting enemy weak points. I think this gun is so cool, and it's one of the cheaper weapons. This is why. If you hit somebody in a non-weak point, it does nothing. Absolutely no damage. However, if you know their weak points, like with a zombie in the head, or with one of the gammas in the sewer and being their tentacles inside their mouth, or with the hunter being their head as well, it is a one-hit weapon. And there is no getting up from it. Once they are down, they are down, as you can see. And at first I just thought, oh, that's cool. It kills a zombie in one hit. Pretty good weapon, I guess. No, no, no. It takes down gammas in one hit if you wait until their mouth is open. It takes down hunters in one hit. The thing about taking down the hunters in one hit is that you have to be lucky when you hit them that they're rearing back to come at you, hit them in the head, they're down, they're dead. End, end, of, end of game form. So if you just hit them in the body or if you try to sneak up behind them you know like the one in the hospital it, it i don't know if it doesn't do any damage but it certainly doesn't take them down but wait until they start to attack you one shot in the head and they're gone okay the only thing i do have to say about this weapon as far as complaints is the amount of time it takes to recharge before you can shoot another shot so i, I think i've showed you this before but we'll do it again what we're going to do is fire a shot and I'm going to continue to press the button until another shot comes out. We'll see how long between shots. So we have one, two, three, about three seconds in between shots, maybe even a little bit longer. So if you are, you know, running to a big herd of zombies and you've got four or five of them coming at you at one time, this may be kind of difficult to sit there and, and you know, take them out one at a time. But as far as, you know, coming across things that you can handle in groups of two or three or something like that, even long shot, I don't know if I can pop this one from up here. Oh yeah, even long shots. As you can see, one hit and they're down and I promise you they will not get up. I love this weapon. I actually absolutely love this weapon. And... <laughs> Again, it was one of the first things that I unlocked and I did a complete playthrough almost with it. And that includes uh, the pale heads as well. Yeah, the pale heads that you normally have to put, you know, a mag round in their head or a, uh, uh, you know, a couple shotgun shells at least. This thing, one shot, they're down, long as you hit them in the head. So, 
All right, next up, we've got this Infinite CQBR assault rifle. Uh, a 556 by 45 millimeter assault rifle optimized by UBCS for this operation. Its short length uh, affords great mobility even in urban settings. Now this is what I used. This was the next weapon I unlocked. So I went from the Raiden to this to the Infinite Grenade Launcher. That was kind of the progression that I went through. Uh, this is pretty standard as far as an assault rifle it's about like Carlos's maybe maybe a little bit more powerful but I will say this uh, this weapon with the coins the assault coins is absolutely awesome I love it uh, even in big herds and they're coming at you I mean you can you're mowing them down like grass like the little scene in the hospital where Carlos uh, puts the battery in the detonator uh, to get through the shower wall. And then there's four or five zombies on the other side. I mean, right there, I think I've got a demo video of that in uh, on my playlist. You can, you can watch it if you want to, but they weren't even making it through the shower wall. They weren't even making it through the hole. I was just mowing them down with infinite ammo for one. And with those assault coins, like one shot in the head maybe two and they were they were gone so really really enjoy this weapon and like i said before it is the next one that i unlocked after uh the little energy shot pistol and as you can see it definitely i think it has quite a bit more punch already than carlos's assault rifle but when paired with the uh, assault coins, it it really does extremely well. Really like this weapon. So, is that all we have for here? No, we have these other two. Okay, so we have the Infinite MUP handgun, a very well balanced 16 shot 9 millimeter handgun. Its pinpoint accuracy has led to its adoption by countless militaries. Okay, the thing about this handgun is, guys. I, and I don't know how many of you know this or not. Most of you do, I'm sure. A gun is only as powerful as the size round it takes. A nine millimeter is a nine millimeter is a nine millimeter. Okay, it's it's uh, you know it may be a little bit more powerful than your standard handgun that you start out with, but it's not it's not like having the mag or something like that. It's not a one shot kill or anywhere near it. Uh, for zombies you know it, it it's gonna take four or five hits just like with your other handgun before you kill a zombie as you can see there's two shots he hasn't even hit the ground yet three four finally hit the ground but I'm betting he's not dead back up one two three I don't want to count that a headshot so uh, uh, about the only really good thing about this weapon, as opposed to the other handgun, is its infinite ammunition. Now again, any of these weapons paired with the assault coins are going to do quite a bit more damage. But by themselves, you know, again, a 9mm is a 9mm is a 9mm. So, and you can see that it, it doesn't have that quick crosshair zoom in like the other, like the Samurai Edge did. Uh, so this is honestly extremely, extremely comparable to the first handgun that you start out with. So to be quite honest with you guys, I didn't unlock any of these handguns uh, to start out. Again, I was looking for something that packed a little bit more of a punch that was going to help give me an edge to get through these a little quicker so now i would like to show you some of these coins and how can i do that let's say we're going to put that up put that up put that up actually we're going to put the defense coins back it's pretty uh, self-explanatory what the defense coins do. Uh, they make it to where you take less damage when you get hit or bit. And they do extremely well at that. 
so there's really no need to show those off uh, basically if if something was gonna you know attack you and put you in danger with one shot it will probably put you in somewhere in the caution range uh, yes they're great to have again just like with everything here you have to have them in your inventory to do anything having one is great having both in your inventory at the same time doubles the effect so it makes a tremendous tremendous difference now sorry I had a lot of cigarette yes I smoke I know it's a nasty habit but okay now now that I have these coins out we're gonna go back and kind of recheck some of the damage on these on these weapons so this let's do the uh, let's do the samurai edge again now that I've got two of the assault coins one shot he's down and dead one shot to the head and he was a goner I don't know if that's I doubt that standard surely it takes normally more than one no I don't know I'm not gonna say yet this is definitively a one shot down handgun with the assault coins but it may be listen they all hit the ground okay she wasn't dead two shots now she's dead were you dead no but you are now all right so definitely having the coins make these weapons a lot lot more powerful as you can see again we were having to fire you know three and four times on these guys before one shot we downed them one shot we finished them off and now we're in ammunition but he's dead yeah so definitely makes a huge huge difference by having those assault coins and again just like with the other coins by having them having one is awesome having the second doubles that effect uh and lastly once again you have to have them in your inventory so I'm not even going to test this. I'm going to say it's pretty comparable, more than likely, to this handgun and with the other 9mm. They're all going to be about the same. Okay, guys? So you have your choice. And, and again, this thing looks cool. But as far as damage-wise, it's probably the better of the three, I would say. Uh, strictly because you do score, uh, you score more criticals for one and that quick crosshair zoom definitely the better as far as power wise of the three however if uh you know if i was going to say just for the uh convenience of it this one here having the uh the infinite ammo of the mup is probably going to outweigh the other option especially if you have the defense coins because if you have the defense coins it's going to boost it up so you know so much that it's going to feel just as powerful as the other so and let's see okay we're going to show you guys this assault rifle again in a in a bit of a herd situation where we have multiple zombies let me go grab my bolt cutters real quick then we're going to enter there and with having these assault coins on i'm going to show you how quickly this uh this assault rifle here can mow down, you know, a pretty decent sized herd of three or four zombies. Uh, there they are. I'm pretty sure there's at least, let's see, this is standard mode. I think there's two in the back and one as you enter. So I'll be able to give you a little bit better understanding of how quick it's able to drop them. All right, all right. You getting up, buddy? Well, there's nobody back here. Not exactly sure why they aren't up. Ah, <laughs> uh, he is. All right. I'm gonna come out here. really does a great job with the assault coins especially 
I mean, I, it's definitely one step up from, you know, where you start and my, I would say somewhere in the middle uh, between the, the weapons that you have on hand when you begin and having the infinite rocket launcher. It's probably the middle ground. All right, last but not least, you've got this rocket launcher. This thing will make your life so much easier. Having this, even on Inferno mode, there is not a single enemy that is not a one-shot kill. Nothing. Other than Nemesis itself. And even Nemesis itself, like in the rooftop scene where he's got the rocket launcher, I can down him in three rockets. Not three perfectly timed rockets. I mean, starting, you know, starting the fight itself, walking up, going one, two, three at his feet and being being done. Like this is what the speedrunners use to get through, uh, you know, just anything basically. And it it's, you know, it, the reason it costs so much as far as points wise, is because it's worth every damn penny i mean it just makes life so much easier and once you've figured out the location of everything you know it's just a matter of walking around a corner and if you know a zombie's going to be there firing a shot they're gone i mean everything is a one-shot hit even downing nemesis in order to be able to run from him like once you release him one shot hit uh, and again, that's the same on Inferno mode. So, just absolutely awesome. It is rather expensive and will probably be the last thing you unlock. So, again, that's pretty much it. That's the point of this video. I will tell you once again, the way I started was I unlocked the Raiden first. I did unlock the hot dogger along with the Raiden, thinking that it was gonna be something that was going to help improve my play, uh, make it easier or make, give me quicker times. If I were you, I would not waste your points on that hot dogger at all. Uh, as far as this Raiden is concerned, if you know one of your biggest worries is getting through the game with the right amount of ammunition, then it's a great weapon. It does absolutely nothing on Nemesis. So do not even attempt to use it because it will not hurt him one bit. But hunters, gammas, zombies, everything else, pale heads, one shot kills with this thing. This is where I started. Uh, this was the again, the first thing that I unlocked. This was somewhere in the middle ground it was actually once i completed the playthrough with this in a little bit quicker time i think i got the s in standard mode first which you know uh that along with a couple of the other side quests you know reading all the all the files or what have you gave me enough to unlock this the infinite assault rifle and the assault coins first and that gave me enough to get through it on hardcore and get the S, which gave me enough to unlock the infinite rocket launcher. And again, once you have this, it is just, it, this whole game is a breeze. There's absolutely nothing you can't do. Uh, I'm currently trying to, to tell you how powerful and overpowered it is, I'm currently trying to get through inferno mode in less than an hour and i'm really really close and it's not because of me having to wait on enemies it's just you know uh it, you waste time here and there going and grabbing certain things but it's definitely not because of enemies so uh, you know this is your ultimate goal if you want to say you know this is this is what you're looking to unlock now if you want to save up all your points and grab this first that's going to make life a lot easier uh, but that's really just up to you guys the way you want to play it. So that's my time, guys. Again, I'm House Arrest Pro, and this is another Resident Evil 3 video. I will be broadcasting live tomorrow trying to do a uh, under an hour Inferno run. I'm getting really, really close. As a matter of fact, I finished one today that was one hour, one minute, and like, 30 something seconds so i'm getting really really close i think i know a few things that i can cut out as far as time wise 
and get it to where it's under an hour. I know people have done it, so I do know it is possible. Uh, and I'm just trying to make it, you know, possible on myself uh, to see if I can personally do it. So we'll be going live tomorrow, probably around three or four o'clock. I'll send out an invitation uh, and a notification. So again, if you like this video, just hit the like, subscribe button, ring that bell. Uh, my name is House Arrest Pro, and until next time, you guys take it easy.